Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jake Podger. I am the host of the AFC East Summit Show tonight. Joining us on this special Mock Draft 3.0 edition of the AFC East Summit, we have Anthony representing the New York Jets, Dolphin Keith representing the Miami Dolphins, myself representing the Buffalo Bills, and finally the return of our guy Chris from Pats Nation representing those New England Patriots. He's ready to do some work today in this mock draft. More to follow after this. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, we're excited for tonight's show. It's going to be a good one, that's for darn sure. Uh, now that the first wave of free agency is over with, um, we're going to kind of dive into that first, uh, and then we're going to go right into our mock draft 3.0 with some trades. We're going to do a four-round mock draft with a different system this time around. We're not going to use the PFF mock draft simulator. We're going to use the Pro Football Network simulator because the trading situation, a little bit easier on that to maneuver, and uh, the trades are offered right off the bat, so it's kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, guys, how we doing? Chris, I'm going to start with you, brother. You got a sweet new space behind you. I know you just got a new job. Uh, how's life? How's life, man? Life is, uh, life is, sorry, let me go ahead and cover my headphone. That way, that way it doesn't come in a little muffled, right? But um, life has been pretty good. I can't complain. You know, been um, hustling over here, switched uh, careers, went from IT. So right now I'm in insurance sales. So it's been keeping me plenty busy. I'm outside of that, you know, just uh, having to get used to life that's no longer work from home job. I know before I was working from home, so now I'm commuting um, to the city. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful. I've been actually getting out more, riding my motorcycle all the time now. So I actually drive to city traffic. It's it's pretty fun. So I can't, I can't complain. I'm staying active and um, making some money. You be careful on that motorcycle now. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but uh, I know our guy Brett recovering from a little uh... – Injury that he had. Oh. Brett, we're thinking about your brother. I know you're supposed to host tonight, but he will be back on the show sooner rather than later. It looks like his recovery is going extremely well. So uh we love you, Brett. We're thinking about you and uh keep doing your thing, man. Just don't send us any more of these false contracts. He said today that our boy Casey Tuhill, who just signed with the Buffalo Bills, signed for four years, 25 million. Brett, I don't know where you're getting your info from, but you made me and Sean panic a little bit when you sent that. So please. I know you're a little <laughs> cussed right now, but no more of that. No more of that, okay? <laughs> but some bigger news. Uh, Chris, by the way, that's great to hear, man. I'm happy for you. Uh, sounds like life is good. That space behind you is freaking awesome. Talk about lighting the candle at both ends. What is it, 8.07 p.m. Eastern right now? You're still in the office. You're crushing it, brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm up. I'm normally up from like 8 to 8 or, you know, 8 to 10 sometimes. You know, putting them hours, just kind of getting acclimated to the job. My third weekend, so... Um, you yeah. know, just putting a lot of hours and out here just chasing that dream, you know, that American dream of financial freedom. So I know it's going to eventually yeah. take <laughs> time for you. Uh, that's Seahawks in it. <laughs> You're manifesting it right now, brother. So great yeah. to hear. This is what I was going to just get into, though. Uh, Anthony, yeah, big signing so, yeah, today. By your... dream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anthony, huge signing by your New York football Jets. Mike Williams, one year, $15 million. I know you guys also just recently signed Tyron Smith to like a, what was it, a $20 million deal as well. Yeah, and but he has, uh, I'll talk about the contract. The, the, the Mike yeah. Williams details hasn't, haven't come out yet, but it'd be, originally it was like reported that Smith got $20 million for a year and then it actually came out. He just gets like a million and a, a million and a quarter every game that he plays. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, that, that's actually a great contract then. I like it, that. It, it's a better contract, but like, that sort of gets into the, the 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 meat of the free agency and what I think like needs to get tamped down on, particularly with pertains to to, to Smith, but also uh, to Williams. People think that like the free agency is like this, this free market or whatever, but really like you're picking through the gently used thrift shop like yeah. store shirts. Like that's what you're looking for when you're in free agency. Now, um. Yes, they, they they the contract can be up to twenty million for Tyron Smith, but like last year was the best the the best year that he's played in a long time, and he played thirteen games. Year before that, four games. Year before that, eleven games. Year before that, two games. 
He hasn't played a full season in almost a decade. Mm. So, like, yeah. yes, we are theoretically getting Tyron Smith, but the Tyron Smith of the last four years has averaged seven and a half games a year. I don't know if anybody could be like super. Like, I, I know that the, that the, the Jets fans on Twitter are going absolutely nuts about it. Oh my God, best left tackle ever. Like, best one we've had since DeBrickershaw Ferguson. DeBrickershaw Ferguson missed one play in like 15 years of his entire career. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, Tyron Iron. Smith has played, hasn't played a full season in almost a decade and hasn't played more than 13 games, like, in that time. And in the last yeah. four years, he's averaged seven and a half games a year. Am I excited about it? Is it a better left tackle? Sure, for the games he plays. But it's like the Teron Armstead thing. Maybe he's healthy. Maybe he's not. And you're going to have to take the average of the healthy Tyron Smith with the average of his backup, whoever that's going to be. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point, Anthony. And, you know, talking about not playing a full season, you know, your other signing today who Mike really Williams – Everybody is jacked about him, and I, I understand why. Yeah, Mike Williams yeah. is a 30-year-old wide receiver who's coming off an ACL. Mm -hmm. And it is unprecedented for a 30-year-old wide receiver to get back to his peak form after an ACL. People will talk about Brees Hall, who was 22 when he tore his ACL and came back last year. Right. Like, we're talking about a 30-year-old wide receiver. Now... In his best, he's never been the most prolific receiver. He's very much a jump ball guy. He is he has great hands. He's not much of a separator. I can live with that. Knowing that it's going to be Mike Williams and maybe by the end of the season he'll be 80% of what he was at his peak, that might be enough for us. But again, I'm not I'm not jumping for joy because this team has an expiration date. Tyron Smith is a one-year deal. Mike Williams, right. it's a one-year deal. We don't have options for next year. We still need to figure out what the rest of the team is. What this free agency period was, and Morgan Moses, we also didn't get into, but another decent signing, an older veteran, but with a with a very clear expiration date. This team might have two years before it's going to require a full teardown. Now, we're still going to be able to re-sign Sauce Gardner. We're still going to be able to re-sign Jermaine Johnson. We'll be able to re-sign most of the younger core players. But most of this team is going to be ushered out the door over the next two years. So we need to hit on this tiny, tiny window. Am I excited? Yeah, but I'm not over the moon. Yeah, that's fair. And I was going to say, actually, I think Mike Williams is due for a nice season. It seems like, actually, as of recent, it's like almost every other season he has a pretty good year. So this past mm -hmm. year was his injury season. So hopefully yeah. this year, fingers crossed for you, not for us, you know, 800 to 1,000 yards. Why not, right? You'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, if, he, if he can give us that 800 to – if he can give us the 90 catches that he averages 900 yards or whatever, that, that that's fine because we have uh, we have Garrett Wilson as our number one. But, like, it's not – this is not, like – if we were going to the Super Bowl, he's not putting us over. Mm -hmm. He's helping us incrementally get better. Well, the good news is I would say it's definitely upgrade an upgrade for you guys yeah. over Jason Brownlee. Or a guy like over Alan Lazard, nothing. you know. Mm -hmm. So you do have your wide receiver too for right now. For sure. Um, just a big question mark on whether he can remain healthy. And the crazy part is, honestly, this past season, he was having a really good year up until yes, he got he injured. Like he was going yes, off. He was. Yeah. So, you know, you, you hate seeing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I you know, I I agree with everything you said. You know, I was I was actually a little excited for you, but then I'm like, oh, you know what though? Is he gonna be healthy? Because 30 years old coming off an ACL. Yeah. Yikes. That's rough. The only mm -hmm. guy to really do that was Adrian Peterson. Otherwise, I don't I, think I he was 30, though. He was still only like 25 you or 26. Yeah, I actually wonder what his age was when that was. You might be right because it was what, 2012. So, yeah, yeah he might have been like 28 even. Yeah, when that actually happened. So, I can actually tell you right now. I just looked it up. So, 2012, he's 27 years old. So, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, interesting stuff for sure. Um, any other signings that occurred with the Jets that you want to highlight? 
Uh, there's nothing else that was major. I think we've we might have added a couple of like depth guys here and there. Uh, we still don't have a running back two behind Brees Hall. Uh, it's you know it's great that we let Michael Carter walk for no reason. We cut him, Zonovan Knight. We cut him. Uh, we have Izzy Abanaconda. We'll see if they decide to give him carries this year. Uh, besides that, we really just needed to sure up. And we don't have like the situational pass rusher to replace Rice Huff. Though mm-hmm. so I guess that's just going to all go to Will McDonald. I don't know. I, I just, I fully expect that this signing means that the, the Jets are going to take a defensive tackle in the first round. I joked about it, but like, <laughs> I fully yeah. expect we're going to go defense in the first round. Yeah, I could see it. That was pretty funny. The thing that uh, Anthony had sent us in our discord, by the way, if you're not a member of our discord, join by clicking the link below in the description, you guys will see it on there. We have a lot of new fans, a lot of new, uh, people joining in that discord. We got some chiefs fans in there, Weston being one of those guys. So we appreciate everyone joining the uh, discord. It was awesome. Uh, All right. So to talk about this for a second, yeah, he's not wrong. The jets uh, have a real uh, under Joe Douglas have a nasty habit of signing as free agents, not necessarily as drafting. I know Becton gets this rap as being injury prone, but like he didn't have any injuries in college at all. Um, But like, Joe Douglas takes a lot of swings on guys that are always injured. Dwayne Brown being a recent one, George Fant being one that we grabbed uh, before that, uh, C.J. Ozama being one. Um, he has a really nasty habit of of feeling like he gets a steal on guys that are injured all the time, and then they get injured, and it's like Pikachu face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm not feeling great about this round of signings. I, I get it. I understand it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's bargain hunting, but like, you know, you can't play. You have a two year window, maybe. Right. Yeah. And and how how do you feel about losing Bryce Huff? I mean, he got paid. It. It's, right? It disgusts but, me. Yes. It letting a, a player that you developed as an undrafted free agent, part of Joe Douglas's first uh, draft class, which is considered an absolute disaster class. One of the saving graces was Bryce Huff. Yeah. He's an undrafted free agent too. I mean, he, yeah, guy killed Ten it. sacks in his first year, getting as many snaps as he did. Second yeah. year in a row with elite pass rushing uh, win rates. Second right. year in a row. They didn't even play him until week four. It wasn't until week four that he was getting more than thirteen percent of snaps, and then after week four, he was averaging, I think, fifty-three percent snaps. Which is to say that, like, self scouting is a is a Robert Sala problem. Mm-hmm. It's it's it not playing your best players in positions for them to be successful is a Robert Sala problem. Drafting a first round defensive end and not playing him more than thirteen percent of snaps—that's two years in a row that we've done that. First with Jermaine, then with Will McDonald. Self scouting is a problem. Yeah. Well, I I think I understand a little bit about that. I feel like we've kind of gone through some of that with Sean McDermott as well. It seems like he's a little hesitant. I'm playing some of these first round rookies, whether it's mm-hmm. Kair Elam, um, even I know AJ Epines was a second rounder, but even with him, it's like you expect this guy to be the full time starter, and he's just been Eventually. a rotational defensive end, and it's so frustrating mm-hmm. because you've seen the flashes, you've seen the potential, and it's like just yeah. let them start a full season, let them go through the growing pains, and I think mm-hmm. I, I can reason with you on that. It's like it, it's just frustrating as a fan yeah. to watch that. So do you, right do you guys remember it. Titman didn't even play until it maybe like week five? Yeah. He had like four offensive Bizarre. line injuries before they're like, all right, we'll let Titman play. Right. By the end of the season, he was by far the best interior offensive lineman that we had, and he played three positions. Like, oh, guys, that's crazy. it's not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel about the uh, John Simpson signing as well? I meant to ask you about that one. <sighs> he's another one of those guys that like he's a relative sort of journeyman inside offense or interior offensive lineman. Like, He's not. He's no different than Greg Van Roten, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, PFF has him graded as a reasonable interior offensive lineman. I don't know. Like we'll see. Uh, if he can help keep Aaron Rodgers upright, that's great. Um, but like, I don't think he's moving the needle. I don't think you sign him and all of a sudden you can bludgeon somebody on the ground. In fact, as far as I know, like his pass or his run blocking grades weren't amazing. I didn't watch him. I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. I didn't watch him. On Baltimore, I didn't pick him out. Couldn't pick him out of a lineup if you told me about him. <laughs> well, that's never good either. You know, no, I, I mean, I think a lot of people, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, and and I 
again, I'm kind of getting where you're coming from. You see what the Bills are doing. I mean, mm-hmm. we go out and we signed Casey Tuhill today, who I like. I think he's a good young prospect. Five sacks this past year. He's been behind Chase Young. He's been behind these first-round defensive ends, so really yeah. hasn't gotten the playing time. But when he did have to play, he started eight games this year. Like I said, mm-hmm. he had five sacks. And yeah. good young player. He's, I mean, he's not young, young. He's 27 years old, but I think – He's a good depth piece for us. We have to replace guys like Shaq Lawson and some of the other dudes that we lost. Leonard Floyd's yeah. another one of those guys, right? So not a bad signing for us. And that's kind of how I feel about some of the dudes that you were talking about. Too. That's the thing about John Simpson. Like if you told me that he was going to come in and be a backup guard, he was going to play two or three interior offensive line positions. He can pick up the slack if somebody gets hurt or whatever. That's fine. You're signing him to be your starter. You're immediately replacing a guy that you were paying $18 million last year to do. Yeah, to, to do that guy's job, and you know, John Simpson, I think, is making six or seven, and and that might even be the high end of what his market really deserves. Like these are the guys you should be drafting. These are the guys you're you're trying to dev- draft in the, in the third, fourth, fifth round and develop and make sure that you're getting in. Like Baltimore is replacing him. Like yep. you don't want to have to be signing these guys to their second contract because it makes no economic sense. Agreed. But again, yeah. there, our window is two years. We we hit or we don't. I hope you don't hit. I'm sorry. But yeah, uh, I know. yeah same yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, how so about the Miami Bills, man? Uh, you guys go out and take <clears throat> Poyer from us and Saran Neal. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Poyer coming out with a little social media video talking about how he's home and he's definitely got uh, Bills fans feeling some type of way, you know, obviously feeling slighted, like a bad breakup almost. But let's not forget, guys, I mean, the Buffalo Bills were the ones who decided not to re-sign him. So he still has to go out and get paid. So while I don't love this, you know, because the lack of loyalty, and Sean sent me the video and he's like, man, I I just can't get with this. Like, I don't like this. Like, if you're going to go to another team, don't go to the Dolphins. Don't go to a rival team. But – um. And, and it is interesting because for the price he's getting paid, it's one year or two million. So it's not like I'm sure other teams could have offered him that price. Yeah. Um, so maybe he feels like the situation is good for him. He's probably slated to be your starting strong safety. Um, give me your thoughts about some of those signings that you guys had over the last week. Well, you know, I, I like the Poirier signing, but, you know, um, as Tom for UFL, UFL football pointed out, um, Poirier isn't exactly a spring chicken. So the Dolphins are going to need another safety. Yeah to go along with Jordan Poyer. Um, you know, the Dolphins threatened to sign Jordan Poyer last all season. I thought we were going to get him. Um, he's mm-hmm. from Miami. So, you know, you guys can feel any way you want about it. This move almost felt inevitable, even if it didn't happen last all season. It was going to happen at some point. Jordan Poyer wanted yeah. to play in Miami. Right. Uh, he grew up a Dolphins fan the whole nine yards. So, you know, he's still a Buffalo Bill. Uh, you know, he's, you know, if he were to go into the hall of fame, he'd go in as a Buffalo bill. I don't think he's a hall of fame player, but if he were to go in, he'd go in as wall a of fame, wall yeah. of fame for the, Bills. there you go. Sure. Wall of fame. Yeah. But other than that, you know, the dolphins have showed an amazing amount of restraint this off season. They could have, they had the money to resign Christian Wilkins. They had the money to resign Robert hunt, both of those guys. They just wouldn't have had any money to do anything else. So yeah. instead of re-signing Christian Wilkins and Robert Hunt, they said, you know what? We're going to build a roster. We're going to build an honest to God roster. And we're, we're you know, we're going to build it with depth pieces. We're going to build it with a few starters. Kendall Fuller was a nice signing. Jordan Brooks was a nice signing. Um, we're going to build this thing up. And it shows me that the Dolphins are learning and they're growing because they've become too accustomed to winning these off seasons by, you know, bringing in Teron Armstead, trading for Tyreek Hill, trading for Jalen Ramsey, mid season trade of Bradley Chubb. They're so used to winning these off seasons. It's nice to be able to say, yeah, they didn't win, but it's been a solid off season regardless. Yeah. Um, so hats off to Chris Greer, hats off to the rest of the front office for just having the restraint to, not make that big splash and kind of build this thing up and get guys on team friendly deals, um, prove it deals, a lot of them, and you know, see where things go. Uh, they did, they did, um, restructure Bradley Chubb this afternoon. 
So there might be a splash incoming. So I might be eating my words soon enough. But <laughs> they, they they freed up eleven million dollars of cap space. So there might be a splash incoming. Who knows? Yeah. But it's been a solid off season, even if they haven't you know gotten the big guy. Even if we lost Christian Wilkins and Robert Hunt, it sucks. But I can take solace in the fact that at least. Other spots have been filled out. The Dolphins have an edge rusher in Shaq Barrett. They have a, another starting linebacker in Jordan Brooks, starting safety in Jordan Poyer, start a number two cornerback in Kendall, Kendall Fuller. They brought in a starting center, Aaron Brewer. They brought back Robert Jones. They brought in um, Jack Driscoll from the Eagles to be a backup guard for them. They've, you know, they brought back uh, Braxton Berrios, a guy who I really liked. Uh, he, he solidified the return game. And I think, they left some meat on the bone as far as him as a wide receiver. So, yeah, Poirier is on the wrong side of 30. Absolutely. But, 33. 33, yeah. Chad. Yep. But let's, you know, but if there are any Dolphins fans out there who are thinking he's going to come in and be their starting safety all season long and play 90% of snaps, you are sorely mistaken. Jordan Poirier is a 50% of snap kind of guy at this, at this stage of his career, at, at best. Yeah. You know, he's he's going to be a mentor to somebody young who the Dolphins bring in. Maybe the Dolphins draft the safety and, they, you know, they have Jordan Poyer mentor this guy. He's a um, he's a Devin McCourty in the twilight of his career, Chris. You know, that that's Devin McCourty didn't play. Well you know, that's that's what Jordan Poyer is at this stage. So let's not pretend like the, the Dolphins are getting the 26 year old version of Jordan Poyer. Dolphins fans should, certainly should be. And Bills fans, you can be salty all you want, but you're gonna. This is actually, this is actually good for you guys. You get to move off of a 33 year old guy who has lost many steps. For sure, that's well said, Keith. Um, yeah, I, I actually really like what you guys did too. I mean, you brought in, like you said, team friendly guys, team friendly deal guys, right? Yeah. And they may not be the big splash name players, but let's think about this, Robert Hunt. You weren't going to pay him a million dollars. So no. you could feel good about that. At least, you know, there wasn't no. going to be any back and forth with that. There's just no that way. That was you guys also a massive it. overpay too, Jake. That was also no, for sure. hundred million for dollars. Sure. Like I would have given him 70. Yeah. Um, hundred million dollars for a guy like Robert Hunt, who's never even made a pro bowl. Come on. Now. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And you essentially swapped Jerome Baker for Jordan Brooks. You actually upgraded. Yeah. I feel like at that position, I you know, Jordan Brooks is a good young player. Yeah, so, I agree. And then and we swapped Kendall out Fuller. Kendall Fuller for Xavier Howard, who a banged up lost. Xavier Howard. Yeah, he's another guy who's lost a few steps. You know, he's I don't know where he's going to sign, but if you're getting Xavier Howard, you should know you're not getting you know Xavier Howard from four or five years ago. You're getting Xavier Howard now, who is injury prone and isn't the corner he once was. Um, yeah, he. It wasn't last season. He played all right last season, but 2022, he got burnt repeatedly. Like quarterbacks just picked on him. And mm -hmm. it's insane to say about Xavier Howard because he's been to all these Pro Bowls and led the league in interceptions a couple of times. You know, Dolphins are they're being smart, um, which is not something I can always say about the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're being patient as yeah. well if that's a good word you know like they're being patient with their signings they're kind of waiting to see what happens and then they're being smart with how they allocate their funds which yes. is good to see you know i think um and I, I i can't confirm this you know this is just me throwing on a tinfoil hat i think i think Jadavian clowny might be coming to miami though <sighs> i do oh, oh boy um, he's had a phenomenal year too i mean he, he looks did. revitalized yeah but he you know he Anthony Weaver was was his position coach in Baltimore. Mm. It's not as far – Dolphins have a needed defensive end. It's not as far-fetched as you might think. So I think yeah. maybe um, that that freeing up of $11 million of cap space, that might be going to Jadavion Clowney. Oh, that would be interesting. I could see it. I could definitely see it. But, yeah, man, I, I like what you guys did. Uh, you also got a special teams ace in Saran Neal, so – you know, I got to talk about my special teams guy, former Buffalo Bill. Hate to see him go. Yep. I will say this, too. If you guys need anyone to jam Travis Kelsey at the line of scrimmage, Saran Neal is your guy. And I don't know why they didn't go back to that in this past playoff game against the Chiefs. <laughs> it's beyond me, but whatever. 
Anyways, I do want to move on to Chris because I would like to start this mock draft at the half hour point if it's possible. I know for us that's a huge stretch. But Chris, talk to me a little bit about your Pats, man. How are we feeling about your starting quarterback situation? Are you guys going to draft one? Are you going to take Bo Nix in the second round? Are you going to take your boy Michael Penix Jr.? Are you going to go with Drake May? Or are you going to roll with Jacoby Brissett or the Zappening? You know what? I, I hope that, um, I mean, we do like Jacoby Brissett. He's been a Patriot before, and, um, you know, he kind of just was able to fill in that role for us when um, Tom Brady was suspended that one year. So I do like the signing of Jacoby Brissett. Uh, he, I think he's a good, you know, gateway quarterback. Uh, as for the quarterback situation, I do hope that they do go for uh, someone in the first round, whether it be um, Jaden McDaniels or um, Bo Nix so, or, you know, or whoever they decide to go with. But, um, you know, honestly, I'm just, uh, it's been a really exciting off season to kind of see all the big deals that are going around and the Patriots are making some moves to kind of stack up that offensive line, you know, pad that because I know that was our weaker, that was one of our weaker uh, points this season. So they're making some moves. They're signing some O-linemen. Uh, they're signing some defensive linemen. I just seen that they, a couple hours ago, they made a move to get KJ Osborne from the Dumb, the Vikings. So it looks say, like they're kind yeah. of, yeah, yeah. So it looks like they're kind of, um, they're trying to actually add some weapons and make some moves. So it's really uh, reassuring. And, it's, you know, I'm feeling a little confident about it going into this season. I know I said that last season only to get disappointed, but, um, you know, just feeling really confident and I'm just excited to see where it's going to go. What I think I was most surprised about was not just bringing back Kendrick Bourne, but at the price you brought him back at three years, 33 million coming mm-hmm. off a torn ACL himself. You know, this mm-hmm. is a guy that I feel like he came out of the gates real strong in New England, and then he's been banged up, and obviously your quarterback situation is tough. So I had a feeling he would probably resign with you guys, but not for that much. But I guess here's the deal. I mean, the receiver market is super inflated. So yeah. that's what a lot of receivers are going for. We saw Gabe Davis, your boy, Kate, or Chris, three years, go, 39 Gabe million, to up to 50. Yeah, with Jacksonville. So I wish you would have gone to the Patriots, Chris. I, re- I wish oh, you me too. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like Anthony said, um, you know, three years, 33 million, 39 million is like the welfare for wide receivers. So, um, you know, so he, he got, he got something. I mean, I wish he could have kept the Kobe Myers cause we saw how, how big of a season he had in um, Las Vegas. But, um, you know, I think Kendrick Bourne really deserves it. He's been one of our, he's been one of the strong points of our focal offense. And like they said, he's born to run. So when he's healthy, he can really blaze across the field and he's really hard to catch and hard to bring down. So, um, you know, um, just the people that they've been adding, I'm, I'm really hoping, I know, I know I've always, um, they say I have an, uh, you know, this affinity for mid tier wide receivers, but I'm hoping, you know, we see something for, uh, from Jalen Rager. I'm hoping we see something from KD Osborne. Um, you know, just some of the guys that we have, because really, I think anyone could make a big name in the NFL if they just kind of like, you know, if it has a good season, a good line behind it. So, you know, just the direction that we're twinning towards, I'm really excited to see what we're going to do next season. Chris, yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys, yeah, they still have some decent receivers. Sorry, Anthony, go ahead. That's all right. I was going to say, Chris, I might make fun of you for for uh, your affinity for mid-tier wide receivers, but every time Braxton Barrios', Braxton Barrios name comes up, his face lights up and he just think there, thinks there's more. <laughs> There is more. <laughs> there isn't more. There is. 33, target, 33 targets last year, and that wasn't even like his career yeah, he high. Caught 27 he had like 35 them. the year before that. He caught 27 of them. That that tells me that they should give oh. him more targets. He, he, <laughs> he looked four yards per he is, uh He's your guy's version of Isaiah McKenzie to me, Braxton Berrios. Yeah. Isaiah McKenzie was more explosive. Uh, yeah. I don't want explosive. Yeah, right. I want sure-handed. Fair. I want. I want to. I want to say, and, and he was not. I think he was more utilized. Yeah. I don't. I don't need explosive. I have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. What I need is sure-handed. I need a. I need a slot wide receiver who's going That's to reliable. Yeah. Cole Beasley. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I need. <laughs> He's got a career sixty-seven point seven percent catch rate, which is fantastic. It's really, really good. But his like depth of target is like five yards. Yeah. And that's fine. That's, that, you know, that, that, that's, that's your. Uh, that's, you know. That's fine. You know, five yards, five yards have, slants all day long. That's not an offense. Starting Johnny Smith, <laughs> who's going to open up the middle of the field, maybe give Braxton Berrios more opportunities. You know, this this is a team that this is a team that needs a number three wide receiver. And Braxton Berrios and Braxton Berrios didn't get enough opportunities last year. They kept on trying to force feed Cedric Wilson the ball, and Robbie Chosen got snatched for the Dolphins. They traded for Chase Claypool. Cedric Wilson caught passes outside the numbers. 
he caught contested passes as well. Cedric Wilson, while he's not a fantastic wide receiver, is more flexible and more useful than Braxton Barrios is. Braxton Barrios is simply a slant over the middle guy, and he's not even that good at that. I need a guy in the slot. I need a guy in the slot like Cole Beasley. I need a guy who's going to run. Cole Beasley used to have 100 targets a year. Yeah. Braxton Barrios struggles at 30. That's No, he didn't struggle. He caught 27 of his 33 targets. He's never – he's had 55 targets. That's the most he's ever had in his entire – no, sorry. He had one year with the Just Man and 65 targets. So he got why, don't we, try why yards. don't we try to give him more – Yeah, targets. I was going to say, is that a him yeah. or is that a coaching issue? You know what I mean? Like, is We're that – We're talking about yeah. that had nobody at wide receiver. Braxton Barrios was still not good then. Anthony, the Jets are not a model for how I'm going to run my offense. Uh, right. it's, it's, I, they're not, and that's why yeah. when you, you give 65 targets to Braxton Barrios and the best he can do is – 46 catches for 431 yards. That's not an offense. Listen, I see both points, and I don't think it's so much a Braxton Burial pro- uh, problem as it is the opportunities. I mean, you have Cole Beasley. He had the opportunities in there with Josh Allen. And um, with, um, you know, just, I think in that it's Miami Dolphins. I mean, I think within that Miami offense, it was kind of give the ball to Tyreek Hill. You know, it was either Tyreek Hill, Raheem Mostert, Devin A. Shan, or it was – um. Well, it was Jalen Waddle. There was really no. Uh oh, we lost him. We lost him in the vortex. <laughs> I think I, I think we are severely undervaluing how good Cole Beasley was. Cole Beasley oh, and, and guys like yes. Andrew Hawkins, guys like Jamison Crowder, those guys ate over the middle. Those guys, yeah. you would target them 120 times on bad offenses, and they would still move the ball. They would lead the NFL in first downs. Braxton Barrios ain't that dude. If he was going to be that dude, it would be before he's 29. He's 29 this year. I think he can That is wild. That is wild. I I think there's more, you know, I think there's more meat on the bone there. And I think there were times where, again, Cedric Wilson got snaps and Chase Claypool got snaps when Braxton Barrios should have been on the field. Um, Yeah, you know, I mean, Robbie Chosen, what are we doing here? Robbie um, Chosen had that one sixty-yard bomb against the Denver Broncos. At least, I think Robbie no, Chosen in that game had almost was, as many yards as as uh, Braxton was, Barrios had on the season. And that was the Dolphins' sixty-ninth point of that game. The, the Broncos were. <laughs> <dark>. <laughs> that is true. That is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Chosen might who had more yards last year. Robbie Chosen or Braxton Barrios? So he had one twenty-six on four catches, which is crazy. <laughs> um, well. Obviously, the one was that long, long ball. Uh, Braxton Barrios had two thirty-eight. So, Our four catches. Robbie chosen seventy-five percent of the way. <laughs> Look, you guys are total polar opposites on Braxton Barrios. <laughs> so we need listen, channel. I want to bet this year over under. Let's say forty catches for Braxton Barrios. Over under forty catches. And guys, forty receptions, not targets. Yes. Okay. 40 catches. 40 catches this year. If utilized properly, I'm going to go over. I like I'm it. I'm going over. It's like under it. for sure. It's I'm under. going over. I love me too. Go... So I think Chris, you know for a fact, he loves it. Life's yeah, too short. I think Brad's going to have a big season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you're going to make out real well when it happens, right? Where he catches 34 passes or something on 40 targets, right? So. Yeah, I always thought, I will say this, I always felt like Braxton Berrios could have, there was, I agree with what you're saying, there's more meat on the bone, but I did not watch him super intensely like I have with, obviously, my Buffalo Bills and some other players. So, he was a guy that I actually wanted the Bills to take a shot on, and we didn't. Um, And, yeah, I mean. You've seen the Bills with Cole Beasley, though, and Cole Beasley with hoovering targets. Second yeah. team all pro, baby. But they I mean, were hoovering. But the thing yeah. is, that that good. Dolphins, the yeah. thing is with the Dolphins and their offense, like Braxton Barrios is never going to be the first read. And well, because second. Tua is under duress two seconds after his drop back, he needs to go to his first read. You know, nine times out of ten, that first read is Tyreek Hill, which is why Tyreek Hill True. is just you know, he just ate all season long. You know, and then it's Jalen Waddle, and then there's guys out of the backfield. You know, Raheem Mostert, Devon Achan, Braxton Barrios falls so far down that pecking order, not because he's not good, not because he can't get open, but because 
he's not Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Okay. You know, if you put, put an I offensive think, line, put an offensive line in front of the Miami Dolphins, put put an offensive line in front of Tua and let him go through his progressions, maybe you'll see Braxton Berrios is open more than you might think. Okay. Let me rebut that real quick. If you have to get rid of the ball immediately, you're not necessarily going to your first route. You're going to your hot. Understood. Mike McDaniel, probably the best offensive <laughs> coordinator in the NFL. It's him or it's McVay or it's Shanahan. One of those three, in some order, are the best offensive coordinator. Maybe O'Connell as well in, in, in with Minnesota. If those dudes can't find a way for Braxton Berrios to be open, it's not a matter of Braxton Berrios doesn't have the time to get open. It's a matter of the fact that you have better options. On teams where that didn't have better options, Braxton Berrios still wasn't good. Anthony, make no mistake. Tyreek Hill is the better option than anybody in the NFL right now. So is Jalen Waddle. Yeah. And if you have to rely on a Braxton Berrios, your offense is already a failure. Yeah. But that's what I'm, but I also think but, that there's I think I also think that there's more meat on the bone to throw to Braxton Barrios. But is it is it so much relying on Braxton Barrios or just kind of giving him more opportunities in that offense, yes, which was true. really pass heavy? Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. You don't you don't need to be given opportunities in the NFL. You make them. I now I will say this. We've spent too much time talking about Braxton freaking Barry. <laughs> no more Braxton Barry. Hey, Sorry. listen, I, I want it in the comments in the chat. Over under 40 catches this year for Braxton Barrios. Over under Can't 40. wait until next year at this time. Catches. All right, guys. But before you answer, chat, do me a favor. The real, yes. The real question <laughs> is would you be interesting. Braxton Barrios or Gabe Davis? Uh I take Gabe Davis. <laughs> I'm gonna probably take Gabe. I'll take Gabe. option C. Nobody. <laughs> no, I, 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 how many I tell, take, tell me how many 150 yard games Braxton Barrios has? No, I would take Chat, Gabe. Anyone? I would yeah. take Gabe Davis. I would take yeah. Gabe. I would take Gabe on this one. It's Gabe. But hey, Gabe just got paid, guys. He's gonna go off in Jacksonville. All right. I know and it. I'm gonna be sad about it. Two or three times he's have met go off. Until, you know, until, uh, <laughs> Zero catches every other. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be until um Trevor Lawrence pulls you know pulls a handy and then he has Matt Jones throwing him the ball. <laughs> uh uh Jake Bill's Bunker, thank you for joining us, by the way, Jake. Appreciate you. Check out Jake's show. Uh check out his channel if you haven't. If you haven't you've been living under a rock, because this guy does some of the best Bills content, some of the best NFL content on YouTube. Um, very original stuff, and uh I've found it super entertaining. So uh, I know he just started this Tuesday night show as well. I think he went live at seven. So I'm going to check that out after this, by the way, Jake. So excited to see that. Uh, it's what is it, Table Smasher, Table Smashing or something? You're going to have to give me that title again because it's a great show. And if you didn't check out our Sunday show, Jake was on that and we did a mock draft on there for the Bills specifically. So I don't want to talk too much about the Bills because we are a Bills channel, but I will highlight a few of the, the signings that we had this offseason that we didn't talk about last week. Um, there's been a few over the last week here, most notably Curtis Samuel. So it's interesting because if you go to our lads right now, he is listed as our slot receiver over uh, guys like Khalil Shakir, Andy Isabella, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and actually, it's interesting. They have Khalil Shakir as the outside receiver. So I'm wondering if that is um, obviously just temporary or what our lads thinks. But it, um, it definitely created a bit of a stir and a bit of a buzz because I think it was a name a lot of people weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bills Mafia is expecting the Bills to go ahead and take a receiver in round one or two. And I think that's still a very big possibility. It just, with this signing of Curtis Samuel, three years, $24 million, up to $30 million, you don't want a guy that's making nearly $10 million a season getting 50% of the snaps. So utilization, we talked about utilization with Braxton Berrios, Keith. This is a guy that I want to be on the field but I don't want that to hinder Khalil Shakir's development because I feel like that was our number one slot guy. And the only missing piece we really needed was that wide receiver two to Stefan Diggs, the wide receiver one B to one a who eventually succeeds Steph Diggs. So I like the signing. I like the player. And if he's healthy and Joe Brady utilizes him like he did in Carolina, I'll be freaking pumped about it, man, because that dude's electric. He's like, 
he can take the ball out of the backfield. He can catch the ball in the slot. He can line up outside. He can go outside the boundary. There's a lot of positives with him. So, and you know, Jake, he, I think, he's only 27 too. We were talking yeah. about this in the Discord. Yeah. I right. he's been in the league for forever. It feels like, and he's only 27. Mm -hmm. Um, great signing by you guys. Love it. I I love for you, you guys, not what, for me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you guys what you thought about it. Table Smash Tuesday. By the way, is the name of the show. Check it out. Bill's Bunker. Um, thoughts on that one, guys? Curtis Samuel. I, uh, I actually love the signing. I think it it harkens back to the early days of how you were building around Josh, which is just a bunch of little slots. Like Josh yeah. is, yeah, he's a big armed quarterback, but like he feasts over the middle and he feasts throwing to the little guys that get open. And so I feel like it's a it's a harking back to the John Browns, to the Cole Beasleys, where like you just give them little guys to hit the ball to 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 hit like on quick slants and to hit on quick outs and whatever, and then just let him like light up the rest of the field. Other guys like I, when you first like got Josh Allen, I remember like the first guy that you got, you guys had like uh Kelvin Benjamin and like those yeah. big get open like downfield guys that had contested catch guys, and Josh Duke had a terrible Williams. rookie year. And then yeah. you rebuilt around the Cole Beasley's and the John Browns, and those turned out to be his best receivers. And then Steph Diggs, who's like an ultimate version of that like short little jitterbug yeah. get open type dude. True. Um and that's and that's point. sort of what a Curtis Samuel is—a little jitterbug, get open type dude that Josh can hit in stride, and it sort of feasts more towards maybe where his game should be, and not like the game that it looks like he could be playing. Yeah, I think I, if I, like I think that. I think if Josh wasn't such a blindfolded gunslinger, it'd be a great acquisition. But he's inaccurate. <laughs> Here we go. Here we oh, go. All right, hit the <laughs> Five minutes, Chris. Penalty box. Chris loves Gabe Davis. But he will be the first to go after Josh Allen. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if, he, if they had, if they had a better quarterback in Buffalo, Gabe Davis would be the wide receiver. Oh, that we knew stop he it, <laughs> dude! You know how many drop passes there were. And listen, Gabe made some incredible plays. But for every incredible play, there were two not so incredible plays. Right? So, you know, a lot of love for Gabe. Hope he does well in Jacksonville. But man, I, you know, I love what Anthony said about. Those smaller receivers, he's had his best years with those guys. John Brown. Then we brought in Emmanuel Sanders, who looked, you know, yeah. five years younger in our offense. Mm -hmm. Um, So I agree. Yeah. That's a very good point, actually, Anthony. I like that. You're making me feel a little bit better now because, honestly, it's I had my signing. concerns. It's a good yeah. signing. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so there was that. And then Casey Tuhill was today, and he's going to be a depth piece at the defensive end position. I like it. You know, obviously we lost some guys. So, um, you know, for him to be Shaq Lawson's replacement, basically, I'm good with that. Younger version. He had four more sacks than Shaq did this past year. So not bad at all. But, guys, wow. it's uh, 43 minutes in, so I already ruined my promise here. I said 30 minutes in, we're doing the draft, 13 minutes over. No surprise there. But let's get right into it because I know, Keith, you got to get going at nine. I want, I want you to be able to draft your dudes. So we're going to see if we can make this work. So. Getting right into the mock draft, the moment we've all been waiting for. I've selected all of our teams. We're going to do a four-round mock draft. Trades are allowed, and we're doing it on the Pro Football Network simulator this time around. The last two mock drafts that we did, we did on PFF simulator. Um, so curious to see the difference in the two of them here and, and how we draft our team. So without further ado, let us begin. And if you guys want me to pause at any time, please let me know. And we already have a trade offer here, Chris. So the Raiders offering the 13th pick, the 44th pick, and a 2025 first round pick for that number three pick. What are you what are you doing here? You taking that? We're, reject we're rejecting it. We're gonna take Drake May at number three. Ooh, okay. Oh, man. I mean, he All is right. so we Shano talked about this to the, to the commanders. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. How does that happen? It doesn't. I mean, that's <laughs> bananas, right? <laughs> All right. Well, I like the pick. Other than that, not a ton of surprises. And Anthony. Uh, the commies are that's a terrible offer. Pats, what else is there? We got the Raiders pick 13. 13 and 77. What else? We got the 11, Vikings. 28, and a third. Mm, take it. You like it? Do you want to see the other one? There's one more too. Denver. Uh, I'll take the the first one. 
Okay. 11, 108. <clears throat> I like it. Anthony okay. making moves, dropping back one spot and acquiring two more picks. And you get another uh, trade offer here. It's just loaded in the first round. So Apparently we got that so. one. We got the Broncos pick 12 and pick I'll take 21. That. I'll take I'll just move back incrementally all day long. <laughs> so we got Roma Dunsey going to Denver, uh, JJ yeah. McCarthy going to Minnesota. I'm gonna pass on this one. Okay. Oakland really trying to get there. Move I'm gonna pass on bit. this one. I'm not taking future picks, they're fake. All right. Like uh it. Well, with this being the case, let me take a look at the board. Uh, let me see who went 1 to 10 real quick. Ooh, Fuaga's there. How do I not take Fuaga? How do I not take Fuaga? I take Fuaga. That's the answer. Uh, let me look at wide receivers real quick. See who's there. Yeah. Uh, we're taking Fuaga. I like it. Sense. Morgan Moses. That's your guy, man. Yeah. yeah. It is. 100%. And honestly, then you have some good depth behind him, right? Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Morgan Moses, you, sir, are the backup right tackle. It's a good pick. And Chris, by the way, you got the best quarterback prospect in this draft, in I agree. mine and Anthony's opinions. I agree. And Keith, too. Keith's with me on that, too. I love it. All um, right, Keith. Let's next, next. Uh... So we got the Rams offering. I actually like that. Quite a few picks there. Man. And then we have you know the what? Vikings offering this. And... You know what? Let me. Let, I'll, I'll take the Rams offer. Okay. All right. So you're going to gain. So you're missing what? A third round pick? Is that correct? And a fourth. I'm, I, and I don't a have fourth. A third or so a you're fourth getting both. Draft. That's that's yeah. pretty good. You know this like this it. is one of those draft classes where you want as many whacks at that pinata as you can get. Exactly. Sure. Hundred percent. Ooh. So this is interesting too. Um, Hmm. Those future picks are fake picks, Jake. The, the future. I, I agree. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you're doing just a four round mock draft, yeah. why get a future pick? It don't matter exactly. in this, right? Exactly. Let's go take a look and see who's on the board. Donnie Mitchell. Let's go at all and just see who. Xavier wow. Worthy's Byron, there. Byron Murphy. Byron Come Murphy. On. Ridiculous. I, I've always said this, right? If Byron Murphy's there at 28. You run to the podium. Like you run to the podium, right? Yeah. We did this last draft, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I want to do something different? You can take Xavier Worthy. Could take Xavier Worthy. Could take a Donnie Mitchell as well. Yeah, I know. Let's see what the chat's saying here. So, first off, Roy, which is signed Jungle Brother Casey One Hill. I like that. Dad joke. Very nice, Roy. <laughs> Trek reviewer saying, oh, no, Jake is drafting F minus. All right, Trek reviewer. Listen, we're going to try to – I'm going to try to survey you guys a little bit more this time around. Byron Murphy from Roy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's best available there, right? And Trek reviewer saying trade down. Byron Murphy is John McCargo, which That's a little oh, harsh. I, just realized, I don't I agree with that. That's a little harsh. Right? I, I just realized how come my face is getting cut off by the bottom banner. I see that. <laughs> It's whoever's on the bottom. Like it's happened to me last time too. That is terrible. Yeah. Hmm. I wish I could change this layout and make it. Let me see. I'm, I'm just joking with you, Jake. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Don't worry about it. See, now we get no faces. Now we get no faces. We don't need faces. <laughs> can we do a two on so, each side? Would that work? Yeah. Let's see if we can try something like that. No, I mean honestly, it's good, guys. I don't want that. Possibly good. We don't have to change it. There's that. No faces. There's that. <laughs> oh, I think bottom. we're best off like this, fellas. I think, unfortunately, yeah. we're going to have to roll with that. Um, okay, so Trek, if you were asking if uh, JPJ is there, no, he is not. It looks like oh. JPJ. <laughs> he went early. Went to Seattle at 16. 16. Yeah. So Keith didn't have a shot at him either. No. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to get a shot at him at 21. And guys, I gotta straight up. I gotta stick to my guns here. I gotta go, Byron Murphy. Listen, That's we weren't gaining multiple picks with the trade offer, so I'm gonna go ahead and take her guy here. Have to do it. And here we go, Chris, back on the board. So you get pick 34, and you could trade back with the Raiders here. 
All right, reject that one. And then you got the Chiefs we're, offering pick 64 and then these fake We're rejecting ones. that as well. We're rejecting all trades. We're keeping our picks this draft. I like it. Who are we thinking? Um, let's take a look at the offensive tackles. See if my guy's yeah. still. Yep, I'm going to get Kingsley Sum- Sumatera. 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 I, I don't know. Sumatera. Sumatera. By the way, by the way he's cousins with Sumatera. Penny Sewell. Oh, really? Cousins with Penny Sewell. And, and we did take him, actually, for you, Chris, in our last mock draft that we did together. We did. So mm-hmm. I like it. Good pick. And again, if you guys want me to pause this at any time to offer a trade, more than welcome to do that too. But I'm staying put. I can tell you that. Such a long wait for the Jets. We don't even have know, a second. Look at Xavier Leggett. Oh. All right. Um. No, I'm going to reject that offer, Jake. Fair enough. Um. What how are we looking here, Keith? How uh? How are we looking at interior line? So we have Christian Mahogany there. Mahogany. Cedric Van Pran. I do a big. Uh, Bordellini is a little bit weak. Uh, in my opinion, he's a bit weak uh, in both pass and run yeah. blocking. Plus, they even have him at 130. Um, yeah. You know what? Let me, let, me, let me look at tackles again, Jake. I'm going to take yeah. Patrick Ball here. Oh, oh that is Anthony's boy. That's a good pick there, Keith. I like yeah. that a lot. That dude's That's got, like, the world's longest arms. It's like 37 inches or something. Yeah, it's insane. Right? Uh, reject all offers on this one, Jake. Okay. And I'm going to go with uh, Christian Mahogany. Oh, I like it. Look at you doubling down. We need it. I've, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been stressing offensive line all – all uh all off season i'll do it well into the summer it's a good move so. Oof. well fellas <laughs> we are in a bit of a predicament here aren't we <laughs> how's that hmm. i feel it it's 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 malachi corley it feel like it has to be although i do like ricky pearsall i like ricky pearsall i do lot, too but i've watched on tape from him and uh, I feel like he fits the the uh, the Josh Allen just jitterbug get open guy. I agree. He's got a little more size to him too at six one one eighty nine. He's he's and it it shows. He, yeah. See, Malachi fun. Corley, this is Curtis Samuel, essentially. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. So to me, I feel like I want to go a different route here. And maybe we even wait and see if we can get Johnny Wilson. Problem is we don't have a third round pick and we didn't make any trades. Um, Trek reviewer saying is Tavondre sweat there. He is. Of wow. course, Trek reviewer's favorite, favorite I mean, nose tackle. The fact that he's here at 60 is pretty, pretty intense. Insane. Let's look at edge quick. Ooh, Chris Braswell. Oh, uh, wow. Why is Dorless considered an edge? He's 280 pounds. Yeah, yeah he's weird. definitely an interior. Three, four. Line. He's a three yeah. four guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Ooh. Wow. Well, I mean, Daquan Jones isn't getting any younger, right, fellas? Yeah. True. Let's make the let's chat happen. Our, let's go get our guy. Nice. We got two Texas defensive linemen. That's pretty. Yeah. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah. All right, Chris. All trains are getting rejected. We're keeping our picks. Love it. <laughs> what are we thinking here? Okay, let's take a look at a wide receiver candidate. I want to see if I got my guy on the board right now. Yourself there, Jalen McMillan, Devontae Walker, Johnny Wilson. Right. Looks like Jalen Polk's gone. He's out of there. Jalen Polk is fun. That dude blocks. Yes. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, he went. He went pretty early. Oh no, fifty-seven. Okay, thought he went earlier. They, they, they when I was watching some of his tape, like they used him out of the backfield to lead block. Like that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think he would have been a good addition to Andre Sweat. Yeah, that was a good. Let's, pick. Take, let's, take, let's take a look at the offensive tackles. My boy Blake Fisher's there. Uh, I, I haven't watched a ton of tape on this kid. Have I've you gotten any thing. tape on him? Is there any tape no. on him? 
I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't even know where to. I mean, I'm sure it's out there. I just I haven't. There, there's nothing really, on YouTube. There might be one game. Yeah, we're gonna go um, for the third round pick. I think we're gonna go Matt Gunkalves or Gunkalves. Ooh, I'm butchering all these okay. guys' names, but Matt okay. Gunkalves, good path blocker. That's a bit of a reach. Good path blocker. Yeah, it's a little no. bit of a reach. You, you want to do it? All right. Yes, sir. Hey, you guys took Cole Strange in the first round too, so stranger things have happened. <laughs> but um, but um, but um, but um, all right, who are we looking at? First time um, we got the trade offer. Let's look at wide receivers. All right, I've been talking them up. I'm just gonna take them, Ricky Pearsall. Let's go. You are a New so York Jet. Wow, there it is. All right, I have to make my pick and run here, guys. No problem. Um, I'm going to reject that. Uh, let's look at uh, tight ends here, Jake. Ben Sinat's there. That's my pick. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Hey, way to end it off there, Keith. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, it, I, I have to go. But yeah, uh, right, Have man. a great night, Keith. Have a great night, guys. Always a pleasure. Take care, buddy. Take it easy, Keith. So this is another thing, too. Um, oh, well. oh, look at this. So we have this trade offer. I'm just going to go ahead. Wait, no, and Keith doesn't believe in future picks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Reject both of them. Um, Where do we go here, guys? What are we thinking? Maybe. Yeah, I, I they need some wide receiver depth. Uh, they need interior defensive line, that's for sure, too. Yeah. Um, Chris Jenkins is a value here. Yeah. Chris Jenkins is a massive value for them. Crazy that he's... is also a value. Um, yeah. Let's go Chris Jenkins. Yeah. Okay. I like I'm happy with it. I think it's a good, good pick for them. Very solid. Yeah, I do, too. Ooh, all right. All Look picks at all rejected. <laughs> exactly. Danny's able to take him, right? Off yeah. the hook. Yeah. Okay, I think this round we have to go wide receiver. Some good ones left, I think. Yeah, Malik Washington, that's my boy. He put up numbers at Virginia, man. Like yeah. 1,400 yards, 100 something catches. Yep. Talk about a slot guy. He's yep. small, 5'8, 191. Yeah, but. Doesn't matter. That dude is right? fast. And the fact that he's 190 and 5'8, yeah. that is a thick mm -hmm. one. Yes. Yeah, probably go Malik Washington. There we go. I talked you into it. I love it. That's a good pick. Pretty crazy, man. That, All right. I'm not. I'm not. Many good. No, I'm. I'm. I'm taking this. I'm happy with it. All right. So, uh, just to go out and see, what do we have left at running back? <clears throat> Bucky Irving. Interesting. Dylan Laub. Ooh, I like Dylan Laub is Danny Woodhead 2.0 to me. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I like Jalen Wright. He's fast. I like Jalen Wright. Uh let's look at the him? guards. Yep. Let's see what's left there. Oh, Mason McCormick. Can't find any tape on that dude. I can't endorse him. That's another one. The FCS I... schools, man. They're tough. They're tough really to watch difficult. Tape on. They yeah. are, they are. Uh, offensive tackles left. <laughs> All right. Javon, none of these guys I really like that much. Uh, defense. Let's go to edge. Jonah Ellis. That's uh, wild. That he's ranked early. Yeah, that seems. And Muhammad Kamara, 188. Have you watched football? Yeah. Dude, he's insane. You, production. Talk dude, about production. That dude is yeah. such an animal. Um, that's crazy. Defensive tackle. How are we looking? Wow. Mason Smith is still there. That's your boy. Yeah. I liked him. Uh, I, 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 by the way, I have to, I didn't get to say this in the last podcast. I have to apologize. I watched more Mason Smith. I liked him a lot more. Oh, let's go, baby. I liked him a lot more. Um, okay. Over yeah. Jordan Jefferson now. You, you got him. Just on Largely because he's younger and yeah. because he does have pass rush moves. Jordan Jefferson's pass rush move is I'm throwing the guard at your quarterback. Mm. And yeah, that's all. Pretty much. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> um, all right, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we need all of those positions. We have a couple of picks right here. Let's go ahead and let's take your boy, Mason Smith. It's a nice pick. That's a good pick. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reject this because we're not going in the fifth round. So 100 pick 150 is fake anyway. Yeah. Um, let's go back to edge. And let's go ahead and take my boy, Jonah Ellis. Nice. Sean Ellis's son. I Good wish. Bloodlines. No, he's not. He is not, isn't he? Yeah, I swear to God. Yeah, I swear to God. No, he's, he's not. not. Yes. Yep. Sean Where Ellis had a Mormon? Yeah. <laughs> isn't that crazy? <laughs> yep. That is wild. Welcome to the New York Jets. Um. Let's go ahead yeah, back to a lot of fourth round picks. Yeah, we, we we traded down for a bunch of fourth round picks. That's man, that's I haven't done want. anything uh, in this draft. This is not good. <laughs> I need to make yeah. a move. Offensive line, or sorry, uh, not offensive line. Uh, go to offense again. Just filter by that. Um. Yeah. Let's do. Let's take a running back. And let's take Isaac Garendo. Ooh, I Mr. like it. Mr. 9.99 Raz guy himself. Let's you go. talk about a combine. Like, this yeah. dude lit it up. Yeah. I, I, I went Beautiful. back and watched his tape afterwards, and, uh... Yeah. That's nice. He's fun. Okay. Brennan Rice is on the board. I'm going to go ahead and take him. You Do you not like Luke McCaffrey? I like Luke, but I feel like he would be there in the fifth round. Okay. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Brennan Rice here. Uh track reviewer. Let's see what he says. Is Rice, Johnny Wilson, Estime, or Braylon Allen still there? So he he would like Audric Estime. Really? Let's see if I think he is available. Yeah. He's the uh... thing is we just re-signed Ty Johnson. Yeah, but Ty like, Johnson's not keeping Audric Estime off the field. True. That's true. And All right, Audric, listen, he gave me Audric, a... Audric, I feel, does the job that you wanted, uh, what's his name, to do last year, the the, the two yards Latavius and Murray? kind of thing. Yeah, Latavius Murray. Yeah. Got like, some big that, uh, to make, Jake. All right, fellas, we're going with it. This is for you, Trek right. Reviewer, because I know you want him. Doing it for you, brother. Oh, 136. Down two spots. I'll reject that. Because I'm going to go and take my guy Brennan Rice now. Perfect. Get the best of both worlds there, right? And by the way, uh, Mike Edwards and Ju um, Julian Blackman have visited the Bills over the last two days. So I am anticipating us signing a free agent safety, which is why I did not go safety. And we just signed uh, Casey Tuhill today at Edge, hoping that we can somehow get Muhammad Kamara in the fourth or fifth if he's there. So that was another name that I kept my eye on for sure. Um, but that's it, fellas. Let's take a look. So uh, started off uh, a little interesting. I really didn't get any good trade offers, and I didn't make any on my own because I was like, you know what? In the essence of time, let's just see what happens. Let's see it play out. This is a mock draft for a reason. I'm going to do a million more of these. This is mock draft 3.0. But we get both defensive tackles from Texas there. So we have a guy that we can rotate, you know, with uh, whoever is going to be next to Eddie Oliver. Byron Murphy should be that guy. And then you have your – your big zero or three tech or one tech in Tavondre Sweat and Daquan Jones. So that defensive tackle unit is going to be pretty damn good. So I'm feeling good about those two picks. We get our big bowl of a back in Audric Estime. And then we get some size the receiver position in uh, Brennan Rice, who, by the way, has bloodlines for, uh, you know, from the greatest, probably the greatest football player of all time. So can't go wrong with that. I really like the kids' tape a lot. Didn't run as fast as a lot of people expected at the combine, but his game speed adds up. It matches to the tape, in my opinion. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about this. At first, I was a little iffy just because I had two back-to-back -back of the same positions, but different bodies here. So not bad. Going to Keats, he ends up getting Patrick Paul, which is phenomenal. Christian Mahogany, three picks after that, which, again, his whole goal was to solidify that offensive line, and I think both of these guys are great value picks here. Ben Sinat at tight end. You could pair him with Jonu Smith. 
I think that would be awesome to watch. You could play him, you know, in the backfield as like a fullback even too, um, playing like an H-back almost. So he could do a lot of things for you. Chris Jenkins, talk about a value pick. I mean, at 99, are you kidding me? I think so. Pretty damn good there, Keith. Pretty damn good. And going to our boy Chris here, getting the best quarterback prospect in the draft in Drake May, getting a, a nice offensive tackle here with Kingsley, Penny Sewell's cousin, did a lot of good things at BYU. Um, I do like this kid's tape a lot. I've watched a little bit of it. He's impressive to me. So very, uh, very nasty player too, which I think you guys need a little more nastiness on that offensive line. So it's, it's a good pick there. Um, I think this is a bit of a reach. I do like it. I, I like him more in like the, the fourth round probably, but, Hey, if you like your guy, you like your guy. So I don't mind it. Um, and then Malik Washington, man, let's go. Are you kidding me? Talk about production. Your mm -hmm. receiver room is pretty, pretty darn good. It's got a lot of solid players there. So not bad at all. And then Anthony getting a ton of picks in this one. Going to Lise Fuaga after trading back twice. Ricky Pearsall, which, I mean, we talked a little bit about him. That dude is, he's, Talk about good tape, like the stuff his, that he does his, on tape. His body his, is like his, his separation is, yeah. is amazing. His ability to mm -hmm. just take two steps and be past somebody, his quickness. He has those like really skinny legs that really fast guys have. Yeah. That make him like very light on his feet. He's quick. He's, I was surprised because I was expecting another Lad McConkey, like, you know, white guy slot. Let's, yeah. There's no other way to put it. He's a typical <laughs> yeah. white guy slot. Like, you know, Jim Rat. Grinder. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's not his game. And I was no, rather impressed. All. Yeah, he's a dog. Um, he's a dog yeah. for sure. And how about Mason um, Smith at 108, man? I think that's phenomenal for you guys, building up that interior of the uh, defensive line there, getting more yeah. depth. Jonah Ellis, another yeah. edge guy. And then Isaac Warendo, who's probably going to be a running back too, between him or Izzy uh, Bandicanda. Yep. Got some speed there between the both of those guys. You just need to have like the the Jets have, have shown, especially recently, an interest in drafting these high nine Raz running backs in the middle rounds and just like maybe one of them works out, but like they're explosive. At the yeah. very least, these guys can shorten the field fast. Definitely. And he's big, dude. He's like six foot two twenty one or something, isn't That's he? That's correct. Same yeah. size as Brief Hall, same size as the Banacanda. They like Man. these absurdly athletic running backs and just one hitters. That's awesome. That is great to see, you know? Yeah. So yeah, overall, I like what we did here, fellas. Not too bad. Mac draft 3.0 in the books. I think 4.0, we make it just the entire show and we do a full seven rounds. I'm fine with that. You got to make it happen. Sounds good to you me. Know? Yeah, so that'll be me. coming. Stay tuned for that. I think we do five total. So 4.0, maybe we do like in a couple weeks from now. And then 5.0. We need to do the one where we switch teams. We draft for somebody else. Maybe we do that for the next oh, one. Man. And then 5.0, we'll do the full seven round as our respective mm -hmm. teams. I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. Uh, let's see what Trek Reviewer says here. So he gave me a B plus on my draft, guys. I like it. I will take it. Uh, listen, I wanted to go to the chat for some insight. Trek Reviewer, I tried my best. I know you don't like Byron Murphy, but he's going to prove you wrong. And he will be Aaron Donald. He will be the next Aaron Donald. Trust me. We need we need to bring Truck Reviewer on. I want him to explain for himself what his issue with Byron Murphy is. I want <laughs> to bring props and pictures. Right. Yeah. Let's see what else he says. Maybe Mahogany will be as stiff as a board so our DTs can beat out to uh, beat OT to a beat OT. Beat at two him. Oh, oh, he's saying because, yeah, because Keith drafted him. That makes sense. Yes. Yes. Chad says, very nice, Chad. Thank you for joining us tonight, sir. We're going to have Chad back on the show at a certain point, too. Um, we're going to do a full uh, free agency recap at a certain point on our Nickel City Rush Hour channel, or Nickel City Rush Hour show, I should say, on the Nickel City Mafia channel. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, that'll be coming up in the future. And, uh, guys, you can catch us every Tuesday at 8 p.m., Chris, it was great to have you back on the show. I'm going to leave you guys with some closing thoughts from each of these fellas here. Chris, any closing thoughts from you, sir? 
Um, you know, always great to be always great to do the show with you guys. I missed, you know, I missed it. Been gone the uh, past few weeks, so it's always great that I have a spot. You know, welcome, a warm welcome back. Um, as for the um, just closing thoughts, man, I can't wait to see what the Patriots do in the off season. Uh, there's been a lot of big moves, a lot of big big trades, and the, you know, just acquisitions in the off season. It's kind of um, sad to not see the Patriot, you know, the name amongst that. I know they were looking to get Calvin Ridley. He ended up going to Tennessee. But um, overall, you know, I'm just excited about this football season. I'm excited to see what we're going to do in the offseason um, as far as, like, draft goes and uh, which young guys we're going to get out of college. I do hope that we do get Drake May or Jaden Daniels, whoever, you know. But, um, you know, yeah. it's, uh, I love it. I love it here, and um, can't wait for next week. Heck yeah, man. Anthony, anything? Uh, can't tell you how excited I am for the draft. Uh, free agency starting around our wrap-up. Um, excited to see what's going to ha- happen over the next couple of weeks or so. Some of these pro day numbers are starting to come in. Some of these guys are absolute freaks of nature. Um, and it's great. It's just, it's making everything just that much more exciting. Uh, headed into the draft. It just every day is getting me a little bit more jacked up. Are any of you guys going out there? No, listen, it's going to happen. Once in my lifetime, it will happen. The only problem is, Anthony, my anniversary is usually draft weekend. I got married on April 28th. So, Every year, it just seems like the NFL draft seems to fall on that day. And mm. I still hold it over my wife's head that we got married on day three of the NFL draft where you find all your sleepers. Taron Johnson was selected while I was at the altar saying my I do's to my wife. Okay. And by the way, I didn't even talk about that. Monster extension for this young man. Well-deserved. Highest paid nickel corner in the league. Keeps him here through the 2027 season, which is great. And uh, I think it gives us a little bit more money back as well to potentially use towards some other signings this year. So uh, Taron Johnson, baby, well-deserved. Always forgotten for whatever reason, but uh, one of the top nickel corners in the league and obviously got paid well-deserved by him. So uh, Chad saying, anyone watching the USC Pro Day tomorrow, I will be tuning into that for sure. I got to watch our boy, um, Brennan Rice, in that one, and Kalen Bullock. That'll be fun. Definitely. But anyways, fellas, thank you so much for joining us. The chat, we appreciate all the comments out there, everyone joining us. Uh, Bill's Bunker, thank you so much for for tuning in again. Puka, I saw you out there. My dad, Alan, Big Al. Uh, Battle Hawks, you were out there. My boss, Sammy V, I forgot to mention you too. Uh, Roy, you know, everyone that uh, comments. Mike, I know you're out there too. But uh, no, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Leave your comment on over-under catches for Braxton Berrios. 40 is the line right now. 40 and a half, we'll call it, is the line. So under 40 and a half, over 40 and a half. Leave it in the comments below. And uh, you guys have a great night. We appreciate all of you. And go Bills. Anthony? Get up. Chris? Pat Nation. (laughs) I was going to say a little bit of a delay there, (laughs) but this is the first time back on the show in a while. All right, guys, take care. Thank you so much. Go Bills.